Moderate voters hold middle ground positions in an era of extreme politics. The Democratic Party has been driven to the left. Republicans rush to the right. It's the politics of entrenchment today. It's a war. Moderate voters are the ones standing in the demilitarized zone. Right in the middle, a shared space, not given to media magnetizing provocations, because moderates see many sides of complex issues. According to a 2014 poll by Third Way, which advocates for center-left stances, they see both parties as overly ideological and wish politicians would compromise more. We see that opinion a lot show up in polls about compromising, but by their very nature, these people aren't marching in streets, turning cities upside down to demand hand-holding in Washington. No, instead, they operate and vote many times alone. Many moderates are also swing voters. The Third Way poll found that 33% of them vote equally for Republicans and Democrats. It depends on the issue, depends on the candidate. That's why every four years after revving up the base with supercharged partisanship, the major presidential candidates then try to recruit moderates to strengthen their ranks and give them the winning edge. And it's gonna happen again in 2020 because they need the mythical moderates. How many of these actually exist? It's difficult to say because polls peg the population anywhere between 33 and 40% of the electorate. Exit polls on election day 2016 found that 39% of respondents said that their political ideology is moderate. Let's do a comparison. The number was 41% in 2012, 44% in 08, 45% in 04. And in those cases, they always split for Democrats. A few groups are moderate strongholds in particular, Third Way found. Moderates represent the biggest voting block out there of Hispanic and non-white voters, plus millennials. And one more thing important to note here, moderates and independents are not always synonymous. Some independents have strong liberal or conservative ideologies. Some are swing voters. While self-identified moderates we've seen have fallen over the years, Gallup found in 2017, 42% of Americans now call themselves independents. That's up from 39% the year before. Looking ahead to 2020, it says, Greater political independence could mean voters are more likely to act as free agents when casting ballots in federal elections. The battle for these swing voters is likely to get more intense than ever going forward, just as the parties pull further apart. 